What's good everybody, I'm Keandre, this is Super Intellect, and welcome back to the channel. Now the draft is a little over a week away, so it's been past due time to do one of these mocks. I'll have as much content as possible coming out leading up to the draft, and definitely a final board because there have and will be a lot of changes, especially with all the returners. Uh, but yeah, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and let's get into it. And with the first pick, the San Antonio Spurs, of course, take Victor Wembanyama. At this point, we've all talked about the storylines and connections he has to the franchise, and he's just in a great position to succeed here. I am interested to see how they view him in the front court in terms of matchups and how much five they see Sohan playing defensively, and also what pieces they look to surround him with, starting with potentially trading up to get a guard in this draft. But Wimby is a special talent that is going to be extremely fun to watch and will help turn the Spurs back into a winner even quicker than people might think. Now the second pick is where it'll start to get interesting on draft night, but I have the Hornets taking Scoot Henderson here. We actually had this exact scenario in one of the mocks earlier in the year, and the reasoning remains the same. I think Scoot is the second best player in the draft by a solid margin, and the combination of he and LaMelo works much better than you might think on the surface. We could get into all the details about Melo playing his entire career next to Rozier, his shooting, Scoot being a little better off ball than he's given credit, and some of their strengths and weaknesses in terms of rim pressure and things of that nature. But but the main point for me is Scoot is the clear best talent available and that lands him in Charlotte at number two. And with the third pick, the Blazers take a man Thompson. Now there are a ton of things that could happen with this pick, starting with whatever Charlotte does at number two and the whole possibility of trading this to make whatever move they think will help them contend around Dame. But I do think a man is a worthy pick here. His level of athleticism, playmaking, and potential defensive versatility could be super dynamic alongside the skill set of whatever combination of Dame, Simons, and Sharp are there. He'll have to continue improving as a shooter and in other areas, but he has immense upside and is the third pick to Portland for me. Now, for the Rockets go with Brandon Miller out of Alabama. I like Miller here as a 6'9 shooter and complimentary playmaker who, despite some of the separation questions, is a good prospect and someone I heavily considered at number three. I think ideally Houston wants one of the guards in his spot and maybe that results in a trade back depending on how they feel about Miller, but they land a high level talent here. And if Harden is coming back, I like this even more with the combination of Harden, Green, Miller, Jabari, Shingoon. I don't know where that gets you, but it is significantly better than anything we've seen in the last few years. With the fifth pick, Detroit takes Villanova freshman Cam Whitmore. Cam is a super athletic and powerful wing with upside as an overall scorer and someone I think would fit in fairly well next to Cade, Ivy, and Jalen Duran. He's got work to do as a playmaker, but early on being able to be that great cutter, capable shooter, and develop some of that feel through on-court reps as one of the younger guys in the class is a real possibility, especially with Monty Williams now in charge. And Detroit is in a pretty good spot despite having tough lottery luck. They've got plenty of options that just so happen to fit well and they take Cam at number five. Asar Thompson is the pick for Orlando at number six. Asar is an intriguing prospect as a 6'7 wing who has immense potential defensively, great feel for the game, and real long-term scoring upside. While you do want to prioritize shooting for the Magic, and that's not a current strength of his, I think Asar's potential and ability to impact the game in multiple ways without needing high usage locks him into this range, and he could have a very big impact in Orlando alongside the likes of Paolo, Franz, and the rest of that up-and-coming team. Indiana takes Houston forward Jarris Walker with the seventh pick and for a team that ran about seven different two guards at the four last year I love his fit here. I'm a big fan of his versatility and rim protection defensively first and foremost I think he and Miles Turner would work really well together on both ends and offensively he'd be able to make decisions and be used as a role man at times on top of the other upside he has there and he's a potential top five talent and alongside a guy like Tyrese Halliburton I think he could end up one of the league's most versatile and important pieces. The Washington Wizards, the Washington Wizards take Anthony Black at number 8. At 6-7, AB's combination of playmaking upside and defensive impact and versatility make him a really intriguing option. Now the shot and ability to put consistent pressure on a defense will be interesting to watch, but I'm more willing to look past some of those question marks for his long-term upside. He competes hard and has great feel for the game, and he can be a real building block for a Wizards team looking to head in the right direction under this new regime. 
With the ninth pick, Utah takes Taylor Hendricks out of UCF. I think Hendricks will be in contention after four as a 6'9 forward slash wing who can shoot the three and make an impact defensively in multiple ways. He's a really safe bet to be a big time contributor in the league despite some of what he currently lacks as a creator. And in this situation, he, Walker Kessler, and Laurie Markinen could form a defensive front court that makes him a perennial top four seed contender in the West. And they've got plenty of flexibility to continue building around them from there. At 10, the Mavs take Case and Wallace, who I believe to be the best available. You all know what he brings to the table defensively, being stout at the point of attack and special in help position, which could eventually make him one of the league's best there. And though there are questions in him being a primary offensively, next to Luka and even Kyrie, he'll never have to be. He can play in multiple lineups, he has a little more to give on offense than he's given credit, and ultimately lands him back home in Dallas at number 10. Taken away by Wallace with the defense there. The Dan, they're just talking about Reeves. Orlando is back up once again and they take Grady Dick out of Kansas. Grady has been mocked and rumored to Orlando at both 6 and 11, unlike too many prospects we see in a given year, and it's for good reason. He's a 6 7 wing who can really shoot it and has a well rounded skill set that allows him to contribute in multiple ways. He gives their core more room to operate and there's some comfort in what he brings to the table, making him a very good option here. Inside. With the 12th pick, the Thunder take Kobe Bufkin out of Michigan. Bufkin is a well-rounded combo guard who developed very well in his sophomore season, and I think he fits this current Thunder movement as a dribble, pass, shoot, defend guy that can play on and off the ball and be a valuable piece as they look to take that next step as a group. He'll need some time to unlock his full versatility, but if he can develop physically, we may see him as more of a wing than solely a guard. And again, that really matches what the Thunder have been building. At 13, the Toronto Raptors take Baylor's Keontae George. Keontae is a potentially dynamic combo guard with potential to be a positive defender in the NBA. I think he's someone that Toronto can build with going forward in whatever direction that happens to be. And the rewards for getting someone as talented and skilled as Keontae in this part of the draft could be pretty significant. Derek Lively is the pick for the Pelicans at 14 and I've become higher on Lively when revisiting everyone in the class. His ability to protect the rim and defend in the pick and roll is something that every team could use. Now we'll have some work to do offensively but he is a pretty good athlete. And in New Orleans with Fred Vincent we could really see that three point shot come together which is a big part of the appeal here and could give Zion his ideal front court mate if you know he ever, never mind. Here's a look back at the lottery. At 15, the Atlanta Hawks select Bilal Koulibaly out of France in Mets 92. I've grown on Bilal as a potential lottery to mid-teens pick, and I think a 6'6 wing with his level of movement and defensive abilities, along with his ability to already contribute something on offense at a pro level, makes sense. I do think he's a little further away than he started to be described, but he's a high upside prospect that could give Atlanta a real boost. At 16, the Utah Jazz take Indiana guard Jalen Hushafino. Jalen is a fairly well-rounded guard at 6'5", who really excels in the pick and roll as a scorer and passer, and can defend well at the point of attack. Now, he'll need to continue working as a shooter and just in his offense outside of the pick and roll, but I like his game and I think he's a good option for a Utah team in need of some help in the backcourt. The Lakers are in a good spot here with a ton of options and directions they could go in. But they take Bryce Senzaball's high level scoring and shooting on the wing at 17. Now he'll need to get better defensively, but I really like what he could bring to this Lakers team, both in the short and long term. The Miami Heat take Leonard Miller at 18. Now, the Heat are coming off of one of the wildest seasons we've seen going from nearly being eliminated in the play-in to the NBA Finals, which gives them a pick in a really good spot. They need some front court help in any way they can get it, and I think Miller's combination of defensive versatility, finishing on the inside, and long-term upside on the perimeter could be useful here. He produced in that role in the G League, and with their current cap situation, anything but relying on Cody Zeller and Kevin Love would be beneficial. Now there is a strong possibility they trade this pick, but I think Miller would be a good option here. Golden State takes Jordan Hawkins at 19. Now Hawkins may very well be the best shooter in this draft and he does it on the move like very few can. And that would make him an immediate dangerous weapon in a Warriors offense that's tailor made for his game. I think maybe there's a little lineup difficulty there defensively, but it's hard not to think of the possibilities of him getting to play with and learning from two of the best to ever shoot it. 
Houston picks Dariq Whitehead at 20. Now, I assume there will be some sort of injury tax built into where Dariq goes on draft night, but I still think he's a worthy top 20 type of pick as a sharp shooting wing that can defend and has capabilities beyond what he was able to show at Duke. And he'd be one of my main targets for Houston with this pick, regardless of who they get at number four. It's right there in America, Uchuku right now. Brooklyn has back-to-back -back picks here and they started off with Jet Howard out of Michigan. Jet is a 6'8 wing that can really shoot it and has some potential off the bounce. And at this point in the draft, whatever concerns you have about him defensively aren't nearly as pressing. And then at 22, they take a chance on a preseason top seven guy in Nick Smith Jr., a 6'5 combo guard out of Arkansas. Now Smith dealt with injuries all year and wasn't able to perform up to the expectations, though he still showed it in stretches. But regardless of who is currently on his roster, I think this is good value for a Nets team that is looking to retool pretty quickly. CD Sissoko goes to Portland at 23, and to me, he's one of the more intriguing talents in the class as a 6'7 wing with legitimate playmaking, defensive, and slashing upside. I think he's an easy first round pick and someone I considered everywhere past the lottery. And for the Blazers, it's hard to go wrong adding another versatile wing to a team that often hasn't had them in the past. Maxwell Lewis is the pick for Sacramento at 24. Max is a 6'7 wing with a 7 foot wingspan and the ability to score the ball in multiple ways and I think he could be a real positive in this Kings offense. He'll need to continue improving on defense as well but he's one of my favorite players in the class and someone that should find himself in serious contention in the mid team. Memphis selects Brandon Paul Zimski out of Santa Clara. Now with the uncertainty of John Morant next season and Tyus Jones future pending, I think Pods is a great selection for his ability to shoot it, his craftiness and ability to just flat out play. I still wonder about him in one on one situations defensively, but he's great off the ball and could find his way into a Memphis rotation early and hit the ground running like a few other previous picks did as well. The Pacers take Chris Murray at 26. They have a ton of picks in this draft, so there's no way they keep them all, but Murray is a very solid option at one of them. He can defend, he scores well off the ball, and has good size. Now, how good he gets as a three-point shooter will determine some of his success, but I think he'd work well with his Pacers team as another big wing slash forward. Seven and four, Murray whirling in the Kobe Jones goes to Charlotte at 27. I like what he brings to the table as a 6'6 wing who can defend, improved as a shooter, and can make a play when necessary. He projects to be a high level role player with a good motor, and that's really the type of player I'm targeting if I'm Charlotte. Not going out of your way or at the expense of talent, but you see what Christian Brown just did. Let's get some competitors that have won games in the past and have experience playing a role to help shift what has been there recently. That would be my vision for them, and they'll have plenty of opportunities to do it. The Utah Jazz are back up at 28 and take a swing with Gigi Jackson. You can immediately see Gigi's offensive talent as the youngest player in the draft, but there were still a lot of questions and youth shown during his freshman year at South Carolina. Utah is in a position to be patient with him and get someone who could end up being a potential steal and maybe a guy that's been overthought. The Pacers select Amari Bailey at 29, and I think his skill set has become a bit underrated. He's got good size, he can really defend, and grew a ton as a playmaker and shot maker over the year, and I think that makes him a solid option in the late first. And to finish off the first round, the Clippers take big man James Najee. Najee has the potential to go significantly higher than this just given that he's one of a limited number of draftable bigs in his class, but I love his energy, athleticism, and motor along with the defensive versatility, and I think the Clippers could use some more front court options. To start the second round, Detroit takes French wing Ryan Rupert. I like Rupert's upside defensively at 6'6 with a 7'2 wingspan, and though he's got work to do offensively to contribute, Detroit has the luxury of taking a chance on his talent and putting him in the mix with their current group. The Pacers are back up for a fourth time and they take Julian Strother at 32. Strother has been wildly undervalued these last couple months, but his ability to shoot the three, get to his floater, and the improvements he's made defensively make him a worthy early second round candidate. He's just an easy bet to be a rotation player and a good possibility for what Indiana likes to do. The Spurs go with Noah Clowney at 33. Clowney is an intriguing big forward out of Alabama who really impressed defensively in multiple ways and showed flashes on offense as a shooter and in finishing plays. He may be further away on that offensive end, but I think he's an interesting front court option alongside Wimby and Sohan. 
Charlotte takes Jordan Walsh with the 34th pick. I love Walsh's game as a young defensive oriented wing with a little upside as a playmaker and someone that just needs a decent spot three to see consistent rotation minutes. He also plays hard and matches that theme I like for Charlotte going forward. The Boston Celtics take Olivier Maxson's Prosper at 35. Omax is a tough and versatile defender at 6'8 who showed out at the combine and has seen his stock increase into the workouts because of it. He'll need to continue proving himself as a shooter and just in general offensively, but I love his energy and activity and think that's something Boston can use off the bench. The Magic get Ben Shepard with the 36 pick. Like Omax, he's a true combine riser that'll be considered anywhere from the mid 20s to here, and it's a pretty easy fit in Orlando as a shooter on the wing if he happens to be available. With the pick from OKC traded last week, the Denver Nuggets take Trace Jackson Davis. TJD was one of the most productive players in college basketball and really elevated his game this year. I think his abilities as an athlete, rim protector, and passer could find him a rotation spot in a lot of places, but Denver could end up working out really well for him. Sacramento takes Jaime Jaquez at 38. I'm not as high on Jaquez as others, but I do think his overall feel for the game and an ability to find a way to make things happen are super valuable. And with the Kings still needing wing size guys, I like him here. Kobe Brown is the pick for Charlotte at 39. I like his all around skill set as a playmaking forward that improved significantly in every spot this year. I know he's a bit bigger and you at least question some of his shooting improvement. He's got great feel and skills to make an impact on both ends, bringing in yet another experienced role guy to this Hornets organization. The reigning champions are up once again and they take UConn's Andre Jackson Jr. And as a basketball fan, it's hard not to like him. He does a lot of the little things well. He's a good defensive prospect and has great feel as a passer. Now it is tougher for him to fit in certain spots around the league given his shot in half court offense, but, but Denver is probably the perfect fit for him. And I think he could end up having a lot of success here. Charlotte takes Tristan Vucevic at 41, and his skill set as a 7-footer with the ability to stretch the floor and move in the ways that he can is going to be valuable for some team in the mid-second. He's looking for a guaranteed contract so he can buy out his current deal with Partizan, so that'll be interesting to watch, but here he adds to Charlotte's growing pool of talent. The Wizards take Marcus Sasser at 41. Sasser is a big time shot making guard who also brings some ability as a point of attack defender. He is smaller and isn't your prototypical distributor, which I think could put him more in this range, but he's a good value second rounder wherever he's taken and the Wizards get a little more firepower off their bench here. The Blazers take Julian Phillips at 43. Phillips is a rangy wing that showed a lot of potential defensively and in the past had more to be confident in as a shooter. And Portland decides to take him here. Traquavion Smith goes to San Antonio at 44. He's a dynamic pull-up shooter and scorer and a guy I really want to take higher, but as a slider combo guard with defensive and decision-making questions, it's a tougher option in comparison to some others in this range, but I love the fit with the Spurs and he can end up being an absolute steal in this scenario. Memphis picks Arkansas wing Ricky Council the fourth at 45. Ricky is a high level athlete who was wired to score and slash to the bucket. Questions about his three point shot diminish his stock slightly, but he's another viable candidate to go almost anywhere throughout the second round. Kansas State's Keontae Johnson goes to Atlanta at 46. Keontae was medically cleared to play, and as long as that checks out, he's a viable second round pick to me. He's a bit shorter than you might think at 6'5", but he clearly makes up for it as you can see with how he's built and he's a solid bet as a potential rotation piece in the future. Seth Lundy goes to the Lakers at 47. Lundy was high impact all year for Penn State and one of the biggest winners of the combine. And in terms of his game, he's a three and D off guard that I think could eventually contribute in LA. The Clippers take Jalen Wilson at 48. Jay Will was great this year for Kansas and kind of willed his way to success. He's a guy who is solid at a lot of things but doesn't have that one signature skill you're super confident in. But he's definitely worth a shot here for the Clippers. Jalen Slauson didn't catch on after the combine like I thought he might, but I really like him here in Cleveland. He's an older prospect but very smart defensively. He makes plays for others routinely on offense and has improved enough as a shooter to be draftable. Cleveland needs wing slash forward sized guys that can defend and Slauson could be a great get for them. 
The Thunder take a swing on Mo Gay out of Washington State. If they do keep this pick, I like Gay as a fluid and impressive athlete that's raw but still has a ton of upside at the 4 of the 5 spot. Brooklyn takes Jordan Miller out of Miami. He's a high energy wing who can really defend and is a natural slasher. It could be a value pick for anyone in the late second or as an undrafted free agent to eventually you know, find a spot somewhere. TCU's Mike Miles goes to Phoenix at 52 with some potential minutes opening up with the likely departure of CB3. The T-Wolves take Amani Bates at 53. Now, despite some of the concerns in his defense and the ability to produce and create easy looks in the NBA, Amani's talent is worth a look somewhere in the second, especially now that so many players decided to return. The Kings take Jalen Clark at 54, who could return good value as a defender if he can fully recover from that Achilles injury. Vincent Valerio Badon goes to Indiana at 55 as an intriguing 6'10 wing from Hungary. Mojave King heads to Memphis at 56. Chris Livingston is the pick for Washington at 57. And then the Milwaukee Bucks take Nadir Efi with the last pick in the draft at 58. And of course, here's a look back at the full two rounds of the draft. I appreciate y'all for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new around here, and leave a comment down below of who you want your favorite team to pick in a draft or what direction you'd go in in the lottery. Like I said before, there's a whole lot of stuff coming out uh, the next week or so and even past the draft into Summer League. So definitely stay locked to the channel for all of that. And also follow me on Twitter if you're not already. That link is always in the description. But yeah, as always, I'm Keandre. This is Super Intellect. Till next time, I'm out.